and Jennifer Lear, welcome to Motivational Minute. We are here today with Jerry Metellas, renowned photographer and speaker. Jerry, thank you very much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, how much time do we have? <laughs> what makes me unique is the ability to connect with people at a whole different level, much deeper level. In photography, my job is to look at the surface. Who I am brought me to go deep. When someone has issues, I see it right away. Watching the world through a lens, it changes the perspective on things. And that's what I come to share with everyone in a very, very unique way. I don't think any other speaker has that same experience. Love, I'm looking for love. I suggest that the L of love gets confused with four others. Not only do I deliver good content, the manner in which I do it, the storytelling, the relativity, the connectivity. Everyone connects to it, everyone gets something out of it, and the audience leaves with a piece that it can relate to. I can guarantee you, if you do that lean, you change your perspective, you change your life. Welcome back to Valley View Live. We're just busy here with Jerry taking some selfies. You have some yeah. tips for us in a little bit. Well, yeah. he says... The entertainment world is like, wow, God, that is crazy. We, 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 we go even over the top. I have the ability to break through barriers sometimes that people don't even know they have. I found that I was able to bring this all together, shape it in a way that's a bit more powerful, and that turns into a great keynote and a very strong message that everyone can get. Picture this, young lion cub running, first hunt, gets his claws in the back of that gazelle. As he's pulling in for a bite, gazelle, gone. And the camera pans in the entire prowl, Loser! And the dad, oh, why can't you be more like Simba? Doesn't happen. Does not happen. They tried, they missed. They didn't say, you failed, you just missed. Consequence, he went a little hungrier. What happens to us? Did you know we are the only species of mammals that punishes effort? I speak on life in all different aspects. The, the trick is I use metaphors. So I take the complex equations, I squeeze them down and take trim out all the fat and found the most uh, common denominators and also the sweet spot of the story. And I put it in, in a metaphor, in examples. Have you ever tried to plant a garden? And you go to the store and you get one of these. So now this is the best version of what you'll get if you follow these instructions. Simple, isn't it? They tell you how much sun, how much water, how much shade, what temperature, what kind of fertilizer. Everything is right there. Now, if you plant this and it says, say, within four weeks, you'll get a plant. What happens? You look at your garden, like, it didn't grow. Well, you say, ah, I didn't do this right. No. You'll say, I had a bad batch of seeds. You'll blame the seed. So if you want this, follow these, it should happen well. Full bloom. So what about us? Imagine this is you. What do you do to get the best version of you? If you want the best version of yourself, do you teach everyone around you how to garden you? If you don't do it, do you blame them? Of course you do. Well, you know, if they had treated me better, no. You need to teach them, train them on how to treat you to get the best version of you. 
If you don't do that, if you sway from side to side, change instructions every day from person to person, don't be surprised if you're neurotic. Because from day to day, you go up, you go down, you accept this, you deny that, don't do it. Unless you give everybody the exact same instructions and accept nothing but those instructions, how do you expect to get the best version of yourself? How do you expect to be in full bloom? Well, let me start by saying that we need to first understand that a corporation is not a structure, it's not a building. What makes a corporation great is all the components, the human component within that corporation. If you make it about the people and allow the people to develop strengths of their own, you could rebuild the corporation in a bunch of tents and function. And one of the ways to shift, create that shift, to allow the people to create that shift, is to give them the freedom to find new perspectives. So the moment you, sh you shift, the moment you create a shift in perspective, everything changes, no matter what it is. If you're laying on the ground and I put a stool next to you, suddenly it's a tower, isn't it? If you were to sit on that stool, is it the same stool? Now, I take you to the 10th floor, put that same stool on the sidewalk, it looks insignificant. What changed? Not the stool, your perspective. Picture this. If I was to put my hand right here in the middle of your forehead and get my fingers up, could you tell me how many fingers I hold? Yeah, good luck. You have to be psychic. And that's what happens. Your life is right here in front of you and you don't shift. You don't move or even take a step back so you could see better what's over there. Maybe it's one, two, three, who knows? You cannot see your future unless you lead. With knowledge, you calm down because you know what the future holds. So I'm inviting you right now to study your future. What does it look like? How far do you want to go? Get a clear vision. If you can't get it clearer, leave. Get the knowledge of your future. Anxiety comes down, you calm down, everybody around you benefits, and maybe your life will get better. Nah, not maybe. I can guarantee you, if you do that lean, you change your perspective, you change your life. By going so fast, people miss all the steps along the way. They look, they're so focused on where they need to be that everything on the way is a blur. So I invite people with this story to take a pause from time to time, look around, take it all in, be in the moment, <sighs> look how sharp everything is. And once you go again, you'll go with more clarity as opposed to just going every, all over the place in a blur. How? Many of you have taken this picture. It was great, right? <laughs> Dad, we should have slowed down. I missed the tree. Would have been perfect if you weren't flying at 70 miles an hour in a 55 an hour mile zone, but that's a different conversation. Now, this one. See what they have in common? You can't tell what they are. What if the car had slowed down just enough for you to, to catch that scenery just perfect? You see the mountains, you see the skyline and the trees, but you're going too fast. The camera does not catch what your eye does. As you go, you could see it, you saw it perfectly, but when you took the picture and you saw it again, this is the beauty of today. You see it right away, right? This is a film you have to wait three months to realize your vacation picture sucked. Now, let's say, can we go back and do that one? No, we're not going back two miles. Take the next scene. That's fine, you do it again and again and again because you don't understand that it has to do with the speed at which you're traveling. Let's replace this scene now with an event in your life. Do you remember the event? We have these little devices. Our little smartphones, and everything's on there. 
And while we're talking to someone, they're there, whoosh, the blur, because we're focusing right here. This is sharp. We see it, but we miss everything else. We go to work. Yeah, I'll see you later. The kid's like waiting for a hug, whoosh, a blur. We missed it. How many moments do we miss in our lives because we're going too fast? Can you imagine waking up one day, looking at this young adult and realizing that this face changed and you never paid attention, it was a blur. Be in the moment, breathe it in, bring it all into focus, one frame at a time. How does your life look now? And I think that what I bring to the table is a fresh concept to old ideas. It's just a shift in perspective and everything changes from there. The, the origin of a black belt is really, really interesting. Back then, you were given one belt, only one. It was white. You're the beginner, you put it on, you learn to tie it properly, Every time you finished, you remove the belt, fold it, wipe the sweat, wipe your hands, bow, and the whole process. After years and years and years of training, no amount of cleaning could get the belt white. It would stay black. So if anyone saw you walk into the village with your black belt on, sensei, they knew you were a master. In thinking about how this all works, just the very basic body language, I figured there's three ways of walking in a room. Cocky, confident, and peaceful, AKA black belt. What I hear all the time, the comment I get all the time is, you know what, I never heard it said that way before. Hmm. Or, why, gosh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I get it, now I get it. The way you said it, I get it now. So when you're a manager, if you're truly the black belt manager, you don't need an office. You walk in, peaceful. You stand. You deliver. The black belt commands respect without using force. Just pure strength. Plain presence. So when will you become a black belt?